In dogs, the knee joint is called the stifle joint. It is formed by two long bones, the femur and tibia, a small bone, the lateral fibella, a cartilage pad on the outside of the joint, the lateral meniscus, a stabilizing ligament, the cranial cruciate ligament, a cartilage pad on the inside of the joint, the medial meniscus, another stabilizing ligament, the caudal cruciate ligament, a tendon connecting the quadriceps muscle to the tibia, the patella tendon, which has a small bone embedded in it, the patella. When the dog bears weight through the stifle joint, forward movement of the tibia relative to the femur is prevented by the cranial cruciate ligament. The cranial cruciate ligament is the main stabilizing ligament of the joint. It originates from the femur and inserts on the top of the tibia, the tibial plateau, between the medial and lateral menisci. The caudal cruciate ligament originates from the femur and inserts on the back of the tibial plateau. It prevents backward movement of the tibia relative to the femur. The cruciate ligaments are so called because they form a crucifix when viewed together. These ligaments move independently as the stifle joint is flexed and extended, although their movement is coordinated to maintain the position of the tibia relative to the femur and thus keep the joint stable. When the cranial cruciate ligament is ruptured, the stability of the joint is lost. Rupture of the cranial cruciate ligament means that the tibia can now move forward relative to the femur. The abnormal forward movement of the tibia relative to the femur may result in the medial meniscus being injured by the femur as it is attached to the tibia at the back of the joint. In contrast, the lateral meniscus is attached to the femur at the back of the joint, which means it can move with the femur rather than being injured. Cranial cruciate ligament rupture can be detected using the tibial compression test. The stifle is held in slight extension and a finger of one hand placed along the patella tendon to the tibial tuberosity. The opposite hand flexes the hock joint whilst the stifle extension is maintained. If the cranial cruciate ligament is ruptured, then the forward movement of the tibia can be identified by the finger on the tibial tuberosity. In a normal stifle joint, this movement does not occur. Cranial cruciate ligament rupture can also be detected using the cranial draw test. The femur is grasped in the upper hand, with the thumb placed on the lateral fibella and the forefinger on the patella. The tibia is grasped in the lower hand, with the thumb on the fibula head and the forefinger on the tibial tuberosity. The cranial cruciate ligament is checked by trying to move the tibia forward relative to the femur with the lower hand. If this movement occurs, the cranial cruciate ligament is ruptured. In a normal stifle joint, this movement does not occur. A number of different surgical techniques exist to increase the stability of a joint when the cranial cruciate ligament has ruptured. The lateral fibella tibial suture procedure places a suture around the outside of the joint but under the skin to prevent the forward movement of the tibia. A hole is drilled in the tibial tuberosity. A suture is placed around the lateral fibella and then through the tibial tuberosity. Tightening of the suture moves the tibia back to a normal position relative to the femur 
and prevents the forward movement of the tibia during weight bearing. The tibial plateau leveling osteotomy prevents forward movement of the tibia by changing the angle of the top of the tibia, called the tibial plateau. A saw is used to cut the tibia. The top of the tibia is rotated to reduce the normal slope so that it is nearly perpendicular to the rest of the tibia. A plate and screws are used to hold the tibial plateau in its new position. The loss of the tibial plateau slope means that when the dog weight bears, the backward movement of the femur down the slope is prevented. In a normal joint, the angle between the tibial plateau slope and the straight patellar tendon is greater than 90 degrees, so the quadriceps muscle will try to pull the tibia forward when it contracts. When the cranial cruciate ligament is ruptured, this forward movement is not resisted. However, this can be prevented by moving the tibial tuberosity forward. A guide is used to drill holes in the tuberosity. The tuberosity is then cut with an oscillating saw. The tuberosity is moved forward and held in position with a plate. A metal spacer is placed at the top of the gap to prevent the tuberosity moving back. Advancement of the tibial tuberosity makes the angle between the tibial plateau and the patella tendon less than 90 degrees. So now, when the quadriceps muscle contracts, it forces the tibia backwards into a normal position. Thus, forward movement of the tibia relative to the femur is prevented.